I'm Lauren Whitehurst. I'm a certified personal trainer and certified nutrition coach. Hi, I'm Sunny Livencott. I'm a certified professional life coach and a certified brain health professional. We also have Angela Salyers, who is a licensed professional counselor, and the three of us together make up Whole, whole Life Vitality. Vitality. We teach Whole Life Vitality of the mind, body, and soul, bringing the physical, emotional, and spiritual together for whole life wellness. Welcome back. Welcome. Friends, we are here today. Oh my goodness, on this beautiful morning. It is just gorgeous outside. We actually got a little bit of cooler weather here in lower oh, Alabama. Man. It is 74 degrees outside. Is it really? Uh, okay, it was when I got here. It's 80 okay. now. But you know what? For a minute, it was 74 <laughs> degrees outside. I will take it. And it um, was bliss. It was just gorgeous. Yeah. But uh, it's, we'll just, we don't get fall here. Uh, okay. Maybe in like December. If yeah. We get fall in December. Which <laughs> we get delayed fall. We do. The deferred yeah. fall payment plan. <laughs> I, I think so. I think that's what it is. It's like just in time for Christmas. Yeah. And then you, in, can, you can wear your sweater. Right. Merry right. Christmas. <laughs> uh, what was it? We had an ugly Christmas sweater party a couple years ago. Oh my gosh. At my house. I hate those because <laughs> you have to roll up your sleeves because you feel like you are dying. It was so hot. My brother brother came in this like thick, really Christmassy sweater and he was dying. And we went through and used, um, box cutters to cut this to cut off. his <laughs> sleeves off and turn it into a vest it might have been the funniest thing we've ever done oh my god did gosh. he win i feel like that should win <laughs> i think so yeah that should be that should be a winning sweater <laughs> so funny okay back on track but although i will say perfect for what we're talking about oh today, yeah absolutely lead into it we are talking today about living with add <gasps> yes squirrel 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 <laughs> Uh, living with ADD because as most of you probably already know, we've talked about it before. I have ADD and our wonderful friend, Sunny here. I do not, but I live with people who have ADD. That's right. That's right. Um, so you're going to get two different perspectives here. We thought this would be really great to talk about because, um, when <laughs> growing up, and we we mentioned this probably every podcast. Growing up um, in the '90s, you know we're '80s babies, but growing up in the '90s, um, mental health was really not talked about, mm -mm, mm -mm. not at all. So you know all of these things that we have, the awarenesses we have now, mm -hmm. you can look back and say, "Wow, um, that's what I had." <laughs> So, yeah, you know, you didn't you didn't know why the kid in class with you was always like sitting on his feet or fidgeting or moving around. Mm -hmm. You just thought, man, that guy needs to get it together. Um, and now you can look back and say, oh, you know, Tommy probably had ADD, or uh, or he had anxiety, yes. or maybe he just had a breakfast full of red dye number forty. <laughs> it is so hard to say, but what there was something going on there. <laughs> what and so now there's all these awarenesses around, and um, so we thought, hey, this is probably something that as adults, we can understand, Hey, that's, you know, I I'm dealing with that and I wasn't diagnosed, you know, back then, or I can see that in my kids. Mm -hmm. Um, and what can I do? Yeah. It's become a really hot topic. I think over the last couple of years and thank you to TikTok Cause I will say that particular platform I think has brought a lot of awareness to mental health as people have started talking about, um, bipolar or ADHD or anxiety or, um, mm -hmm. really just openly and vulnerably, which I just think is amazing. Yes. Because I, if you are listening, there is nothing wrong with you. Oh, for okay? sure. There's sure. nothing wrong with your children. Mm -hmm. And that's something we've see as a negative. Yep. Like, oh, I have ADD. There's, you know, I'm I'm broken. I'm mm -hmm. gonna stop you right there. No, you're not. You're yep. not broken. There's a difference that you have, but there's always negative connotations to it. And then we take on that negative connotation and look. 
it's just, it can be a superpower. Uh, <laughs> yes. I 100% believe that my ADD is a superpower. Um, but I will say I was just talking to Sunny this morning as we were discussing the topic, uh, Dr. Amen, who I think you introduced me to, yes. uh, that, cause that's who you did your, your brain health certification yes, through. My certification. Um, so phenomenal. But one of the things he said that just really helped me was, you wouldn't deny your child glasses or yourself glasses. If you went to the eye doctor and the doctor said, well, your eyes just, they just don't see very well. You need assistance for your eyes to work the way that will allow you to see the clearest. Mm -hmm. So here are these glasses. And so then we have take those glasses and we wear them and we put in contacts and we just don't think much else of it, right? We don't judge someone no. for wearing contacts or judge someone for wearing glasses, but when it comes to balancing out those chemicals in our brains, we judge ourselves. There's a lot of judgment there for taking that medication or we judge others for taking medication and it's the same Yeah, because it's just an imbalance. Well, okay. Maybe one of my eyes is nearsighted and one of my eyes is farsighted. And so I need something to balance that out. Right. Well, maybe my brain doesn't have enough dopamine. So I need yeah. something to balance that out. I mean, truly, how, uh, just hearing that, <laughs> can you feel yourself getting lighter just, <sighs> just hearing that? Um, and we want to preface that by saying, don't just assume right. that you have it because maybe you don't focus as well. Or don't just assume your kids have it because they don't listen to you very well. Or because well. they have a lot of energy. Yes. Mm -hmm. Make sure that you actually are, mm -hmm. you know, going and getting a diagnosis for that before you just assume. And then, because listen, we don't want to, even though there's no judgment there, we also don't want to apply labels to ourselves um, without actually knowing factually that that's what it is. And we don't want to apply labels to our children right. without knowing for sure that that's what it is. And then we also don't want to take medications just because right. uh, you do want to make sure that you are, you know, actually diagnosed with that. Mm -hmm. um, and that it is monitored, you know, don't guess this stuff. Like it is monitored um, and it's done in a healthy manner. And if it is, there should be no judgment there at all. Absolutely. Dr. Amen wrote a book called um, Healing ADD, which talks about, and I didn't know this before, that there are seven, seven, seven. different kinds of ADD. Absolutely. And growing up in the 90s, like you said, it was just... ADD is just hyperactive. Yeah. That's what we always heard. Yes. And so then... You have that really hyper kid. Oh, they're ADD. Right. So then little girls who maybe weren't hyperactive were not diagnosed ever. Mm -hmm. And you would just see these little boys who had a lot of energy that would get diagnosed and put on Ritalin or mm -hmm. whatever. And then anybody else, it was like, well, no, they're fine. They're just having a hard time focusing yes. or they just need to pull it together or yeah. whatever. So many things were said. Right. But, um, when Dr. Amen talked about these seven different types, then that was really eye opening for me and allowed me to go through the book and say, okay, I see some similarities right. here or here or here, but one of them just really stood out to me. And I was like, oh my goodness, that is, that's me. Yes. That's me. And this was after I had already been diagnosed and after I was already on medication, but it allowed me to see so many other options yes. because he talks about supplementation and he talks oh, about lifestyle and yes. he talks about diet and it's phenomenal. So we're big Dr. Amon fans over yes. here. Love Dr. Amon. If you never heard of him, he has multiple books out about, um, our thoughts and mm -hmm. about ADD and, you know, about medications and you can follow him on TikTok and mm -hmm. Instagram and Facebook. And he's, he makes little short videos that are so informative. Mm -hmm. Um, he is excellent, really one of those doctors that you can trust yes. that truly does this because it is his passion mm -hmm. and um, he doesn't just, while he is not opposed to medication, he also does not throw it at everyone. He's like, everyone is different. Yep. Every person is different and they need to be treated as such. And so one medication does not work for all. Um, so different methods to try. So definitely check him out. So. Yeah. I think that on TikTok, probably on more than one platform, but on TikTok, he has a, um, a little, um, album of yeah. just 
talking about ADD and the seven different types. And so for all of you ADD brains out there who don't like to sit still for more than a minute, you yeah. can watch <laughs> it in one minute increments. You'll love it. <laughs> also available on audiobook, I think, if that's how you like to ingest totally information. So. But today we wanted to talk about kind of practically applying how living with ADD looks in our in lives. Your, absolutely. So if you are a person who has ADD themselves. Um, how do you not judge <laughs> yourself with ADD? How do you work best with your ADD? How do you cope the best when you are someone who is, you know, dealing with it? I don't even say suffering with it. I say dealing with it. How do you make it your superpower, in other words? I think that that is probably the most loaded question anybody yeah. could possibly well, ask. We're just coming right in with it. Because I think the most harmful thing that I probably ever went through with the ADD stuff was going undiagnosed. Uh. Because as a child, looking back as an adult, I'm like, I didn't learn how to read until I was nine because I wouldn't sit still Okay. because I just wouldn't. And I wanted to be outside. I wanted to be climbing trees. I wanted to bounce all over the room. I wanted, and I got really phenomenal at memorizing things to let people know that I knew things. They'd say, okay, well read this. And I'll say, well, why don't you read it to me first? Mm. And then they would read it to me and I'd be like, Ding, got it. And then I would recite it back. Oh, look, you can read. You know how to do that. And so you learn coping mechanisms from a really young age yeah. when you're dealing with anything like this, yeah. I think. And then um, as I got older, I just thought there was something wrong with me. Yeah. I'm like, I, why can't I keep my room clean? Why do I have piles everywhere? Why, yeah. why do I feel like a hoarder? Why... Um, and beating myself up. And I learned as an adult that a lot of people with undiagnosed ADD wind up having issues with anxiety and depression. Yeah. And that's ultimately what pulled me to looking into a diagnosis because I was dealing with anxiety and depression. So and you were looking at yourself thinking that you were just a broken person because your room didn't look like other people's rooms. And, you know, it was just difficult for you to see a task that needs to be done and to do the task. Right. I, I could stare at it for, for days. And some people call it um, analysis paralysis or, yeah. you know, it's like the ADD paralysis where you're just staring at it. And I'm like, I know what I need to do. I know how to make this happen, but I'm sitting here staring at it and I physically cannot make my body move to do what needs to be done. Wow. Like it just doesn't happen. And not just that, you're tired. This was something that was happening chronically because there is a difference than I just don't want to do that, that laundry today. Sure. As opposed to that laundry has been sitting there for weeks yes. and I cannot bring myself yes. to do it. Have you seen my living room? You, is that why you're talking to me? What is happening here? Well, Sunny? you brought up laundry. <laughs> did you, or did I just bring that out? I don't even know. We're going to have to play back. I think laundry can always be brought up. Let's just, it's, it's a chronic condition of its own. <laughs> so it, when it is chronically, you're having that paralysis mm -hmm. feeling. That's when you take that step back and say, what's happening here. Right. So when I was doing that as a teenager and I couldn't really, I didn't know what was going on. I couldn't figure out what was going on. And I just was then being, um, chastised by my authority figures because I was not being as proactive as yeah, they would have liked. called you lazy. Among other things. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, then I learned some coping mechanisms. And one of those things that I did and still implement is distraction. Yeah. So I will fold the laundry while I listen to an audiobook or um, think about other things. And if I'm not putting my focus solely on the thing that I'm trying to get done, then I can I can power through it. One of the questions they asked me on my ADD test when they were trying when I was getting diagnosed was, "Do you ever feel like a robot or like you're being pushed um, like by a freight train and you?" you don't really have control over that speed. Like you just yeah. feel like you're pushed. And I was like, well, doesn't everyone, hmm. isn't, isn't that kind of a thing? Because I can set this robot on autopilot now to do basically whatever I want it to do. And yeah. it will handle my business. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> yes. 
Yes. But that's learning positive coping mechanisms. And I've spent my entire 40 years figuring this out. Yeah. So first up is if you notice that that's how you're feeling, Mm -hmm. then there's no shame in reaching out to someone to get help. And who do you even reach out to, to get maybe tested for ADD? For my child, I took her to her pediatrician and we talked to her pediatrician first, um, which was great for myself. I went and saw a general practitioner and then from there I went to a psychiatrist Excellent. and, um, and it's been great. Everyone that I have talked to has been extremely receptive and, um, very validating of our feelings, but very thorough as far as the diagnosis goes, uh, just to make sure that it's not a misdiagnosis. You know, you don't want to just throw around medication where it's not needed. Yeah. So first up, I mean, just ask, just asking Mm -hmm. someone, hey, this is what's happening. This, you know, sounds like ADD. Could it possibly be? Right. Um, And then they can kind of direct you to somewhere. And then once you are diagnosed with it, and like you said, when you see those tasks that need to be done, um, it's, that's such an incredible step to maybe turn on a book and say, Hey, I'm going to listen to this book while I do this. Maybe it's the dishes. Like I'm gonna turn on this book and then, you know, I'm going to wash these dishes Mm -hmm. and, or I'll tell myself just one thing. I'm just going to fold this one piece of clothing. I'm just going to take the towels and put the towels away because once you get moving, it's always that first step. Yes. The first step is always the hardest. Once you get moving, then you'll just keep moving. So I'll say, I'm just going to put away the silverware from yeah. the from the, uh, the refrigerator. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I'm just going to put away the silverware from the dishwasher. And then I'll put it away. And that will lead me to, okay, well, now I'm just going to put away the plates. Yeah. Now I'm just going to put away the bowls. And pretty soon everything is done. Yeah. And are there, are there highs and lows with ADD? Like some days you just, you do a lot of work. And then some days you just, you don't want to. For... It's hard to generalize with mm-hmm. ADD again because there are seven so different, different seven different kinds. But I will say for me, I have um, a, I have mild bipolar that's kind of mixed with that yeah. ADD, and so I do have highs and lows. Yeah. I don't know. I, we would love to know if you do. If mm-hmm. this is something that you are living with, or you know someone who is. And you see those cycles for them because I definitely notice for me highs where I am so productive and creative and feel amazing and then lows where it's much more of a struggle. Yeah. And I would imagine recognizing that and being kind to yourself during Mm -hmm. those those lows is very important, not just because we can probably hear and you can probably hear those words that were said to you back a while ago where this is lazy, you're being lazy mm-hmm. and you want to stop that from yes. happening with, you know, when yeah. you're, when you're experiencing a low and saying, you yeah. that's, that's not what I am. I heard the most amazing thing this week. It was your body processes what your brain can't process. Mm. Your body feels what your brain can't feel. If you are not in the mental space to be able to handle what's going on in your world, your body will do that for you. And our bodies are so amazing that they can do that for us. But if you're feeling really tired, if you're feeling down, if you're like, man, I just feel so lazy. I just can't get anything done. Maybe your body is processing something that your mind doesn't have the space to cope with right now. And rest. Mm Mm-hmm. And so we, you know, you talked about the, the things that were said to you that were really well ineffective, yeah. but <laughs> ineffective and in getting you to do the stuff, but affecting because Absolutely. you took that on. Yes. So as a, someone who is living with, you know, family members, because what you may not know about ADD is that it is hereditary. It is. Uh, so I, my husband has it and my son has Maybe. not been diagnosed, yeah. um, but, you but I am, to see some I am signs. seeing mm-hmm. lots of the same traits. Mm-hmm. So, and, and I haven't, so I would not even say that he has it, but I can see traits in him sure. that my husband has. So, um, what are the best, like, what are some good ways to, you know, when you have someone that is 
you know, you're living with someone that does have it, it's kind of the do's and the don'ts, you know, for, for a wife or a mother, um, of someone with ADD. Um, don't, don't treat it as something that's negative. Yes. If they're not the same one, it one minute to the next, then maybe some grace. Yeah. Maybe some grace is good. Like, and, and I've really, after learning that my husband had it, cause we've been married for, you know, 20 plus years, but after learning my husband had it just recently, I can look back at all the times that I've been like really aggravated with him mm-hmm. over things in the house. And I'm like, you know, why, why are you doing this? And now, so like, you know, seeing his shoes, not where his shoes are supposed to right. be, you know, that, that gentle reminder. And I even pick them up now, whereas before yeah. I was like, catch your shoe. But now I'm like, Hey, shoes, I'll put right. them in the closet for you. I don't even say you should do this. I'll say, Hey, I'm taking your shoes and I put them in the closet for you. Yep. Even just like gentle, mm-hmm. you know, gentle reminders, because I have to take into account, he's not doing these things to aggravate me. It's not personal. If you, right. would, if you, are a loved one of someone who has any kind of mel- mental health, mm-hmm. anything. Mm-hmm. It, it's not personal. It has What they're doing has nothing to do with you. Right. And the best thing you can do is just support and encourage yeah. in the best way that you can. So, and I was telling you, we know that, um, and because I teach mindset so much, that um, a cluttered space yeah. equates to a cluttered mindset. Mm-hmm. So getting into his truck, which is where he spends most of his time working, it will, whew, I used to get so aggravated. Mm-hmm. So now like, you know, a way that I could help and is when I get into his truck, you know, even just asking, Hey, you want me to help you take some of this stuff out? Yep. You know, even just doing it this way, instead of just getting so angry, like why, why are you, just af- like offering to mm-hmm. help out, yep, help him out even. And in doing that, he actually reached out to me and said, hey, would you mind coming to work and helping me, you know, clean my office out? And, you know, instead of your instinctively saying, why can't you do that? I said, right. I would love to. Mm-hmm. I would love to help you do that. Um, and I, I think that has just been, you could even see the relief on him. Yeah. Like, okay. Because for him, it's not that he's being lazy. It's that he thinks I need this and I need, and this is right. here and this is here and this is here. But what's happening is it's actually not helping his brain <laughs> when he walks into his office, which is supposed to be where he's most productive and things are everywhere. Mm-hmm. Um, he wants help to kind of get organized and instead of doing it for him, I want to go and help him so that, hey, would you like this here so that you can see it? Would you like this? Where would you like this to be since, you know, do you work with this every day? Would you like this in a drawer? Just kind of working in ways that assists his ADD. Well, and I think that the statement out of sight, out of mind has never been truer than someone with ADD because out of sight, out of mind. If it's not in front of you, it doesn't exist. Yes. I have noticed that it doesn't exist. And so if you put a stapler in a drawer, then three months from now, he's going to say, I need to go buy a stapler. And you're like, sweetie, you have a stapler. Yes. And he's like, well, no, I don't have a stapler. See, there's not a stapler anywhere. Yeah. It's in, it's in the drawer. Or you open your refrigerator <laughs> and there's five bottles of mustard yep. and you wonder, <laughs> yep. Why, why do we have five bottles of mustard? <laughs> you don't. In someone's head, there is only one <laughs> bottle of mustard or in some cases, maybe no bottles of mustard. So truly, <laughs> truly remembering this is not about you. Like mm-hmm. when you are trying to support a spouse with ADD, they are not, it's not that they're not listening. It's not that they're trying to aggravate you. This is truly, you know, them processing and how they process and trying to, you know, get through things on their own and the support for them, just, Hey, can I help? Instead of, you know, barking at them and Mm -hmm. getting so angry with them has been so beneficial for me and my husband, like understanding that 
you know, that he's not, it's not personal. Yeah. It's not personal. He's not disrespecting me because I used to say that when you do this, you're disrespecting me. He's not. He's like, it has nothing to do with no, you. Because, I love you, but it has nothing to do yeah, with you. When he left his drink there, it's because his brain said, there's something over here you need to do. And then yeah. he leaves it over there and it, it's not, it's not a disrespect. It's, mm-hmm. you know, and so just you know, like those little reminders, Hey, I'm going to grab, are you finished with this? I'm going to put it away. You yeah. know, he's like, Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I need to do that. Um, and to even finish up with kids, you told me something that was so helpful this morning. I have been struggling with my son getting his uh, homework assignments done, getting him to sit and do his homework assignments. Yeah. And you said that you know ADD children really benefit from having someone with them. Just just <clears throat> side by side companion work, and so it doesn't necessarily mean that you're doing it with them. You could just be sitting next to him in the same room or at the same table and you're both working, but something about being next to someone. When I was a teenager, I used to call my friend who lived, you know, mile down the road. And I would say she was a couple of years younger than me, so I could drive and she could not. And I say, would you, can I come pick you up and you can come over and hang out with me while I clean my room? Yes. And she would, it's the sweetest girl. She would just come sit in my room and talk to me and I would get my entire room clean. Yes. That's, I have never thought about that, mm-hmm. but my, my son has actually asked me, Hey, can you help me with this? And I realized he didn't really even need my help, No, but even he didn't can know. Can you help me focus? Yeah. yeah. What he was actually asking, mm-hmm. having me there was helping his yep. brain focus on the task at hand. And that was really eye opening for me. So, you know, there's work that I'm, I can do at the table while he's doing his oh, work. Oh, for sure. I think a hundred percent. And even when I've asked him to clean his room, this is of my three, probably the most obedient child. And I'm always like, why is he not cleaning his room? Why is he? Well, it makes sense now. Mm-hmm. And so even taking <clears throat> my clothes, you know, that I need to fold into his room and just folding while I'm talking to yeah. him while he's cleaning his room, because I have noticed that while I was doing something in his closet, you know, putting things away, he would sit there and talk to me and clean his room. Yep. While he, so that yeah. makes so much sense. So that's even just, you know, one like one small thing that I can do that makes Mm -hmm. a huge difference for our kids instead of just, why aren't you doing this? I told you to do this. You're not doing this. Mm -hmm. And just, you know, really berating them is to just be with them Mm -hmm. while they're doing it. That's amazing. The ADD brain works in piles as well. Mm -hmm. And so um, we'll think that we're really organized, but really it's just a whole bunch of piles. I mean, Mm -hmm. let's be fair. It's just piles everywhere. And It has been very eye-opening for me to see it through a different lens because I grew up with it. I've always had it, but my daughter does as well. And so what we've done for her is we have just simplified her existence in that we've gotten very minimal in her space Yes, and really just cut down to just what is needed and anything that is extra maybe lives somewhere not in her room. Yes, that's great. Um, because we recently moved and at my old house, uh, when we were getting Trey's bed up, what was under Trey's bed Mm -hmm. was the most absurd thing I have ever seen in my life. I could not believe that someone could put so much stuff under, and I didn't know it was there. Like it was, he probably uh, didn't know it was there. there, I'm I'm talking like a ski mask, like the, in the water, like a mat, I said, what? Wait, like like a snorkel, like yes, a kind of mask. Yes. Oh my gosh, that's uh, so funny. Under his bed. Why? And he has no idea. He mm-hmm. was like, I don't even know. And so even just saying, hey, we. Cl- I mean, I. I. This was trash. It wasn't even like stuff to get. It was trash. Yeah. It was probably seven, eight huge bags full of trash. And so even with the new house, like we just like. I mean, I stripped it down to nothing and even told him like, Hey, you know, under the bed, let's, let's not even put Mm -hmm. things under the bed for safekeeping. You know, let's, let's utilize the closet because there's, you know, we have cubbies in there now. Um, so even helping him by just purging all Mm -hmm. that stuff. So that's actually a really great, really great idea. Energetically, they, you know, you've heard of 
a lot of people have heard of grounding. Yeah. You know, you can stand mm. up and put your feet on the ground and ground, but the earth has a lot of really positive energy to give us, mm-hmm. right? And when you have a pile of junk yeah. between you where you're sleeping and the ground, it disrupts that energy. Oh my gosh. It makes the space more I, chaotic and you don't even realize it until you clean that out. So we don't have anything under our bed. And yeah. my children, I also encourage them to keep that space empty yes. because your brain can relax and be calm in a calm space. Yes. So truly like taking out of their rooms, everything they don't need yep. for the ADD mm-hmm. brain. It's really, really beneficial. Just stripping it down to the bare necessities. We have a, a playroom. So we have a bonus room that has, you know, things that they can put in, but keeping his room, that space that's just, you know, clothes bed and you know he has his little tv and computer but that's it yeah like, that's all because whew, mm, mm, we don't need to bring legos Ugh. into this please, oh my goodness please i feel like we need to come back and do a part two on add and nutrition and lifestyle absolutely so absolutely. um we might we might need to do that yeah because two. we we could talk about this all day yes <laughs> Yes. And we realize you're probably at your stop now. Right. Um, you've listened from point A to point B. So right. we'll be back. That's right. We'll be back. And in the meantime, if you want to talk more about this and you want to work through this some more, please reach out. Yes. We're always here. If for anything you. that we said resonated with you, if you mm-hmm. yourself think that you might have it and you'd like to talk to Lauren about, you know, really what's the next step, or if you think that your child has it, um, Odds are either you or your husband has it. But <laughs> there is there is generally a genetic component that is for but, sure. But just reach out um, and let us know, and we'd be happy to answer your questions. Yep. yep, good deal. Thank you so much for coming with us today, and we will talk to you next time. Bye, guys. Bye.